To begin, use the New Design from File tool and open the Cabinet Catch Fusion Archive file. Once the data is open, save it to your active project. This simple design is meant to hold the cabinet door closed, but to be effective, we need to make sure that the catch portion will not deform permanently. To do this, we'll use an event simulation. Switch to the Simulation workspace and select Event Simulation as the study type, then click Create Study. Once the simulation workspace opens, go to the Simplify workspace. The first thing you'll need to do is go to the Catch 2 component under the Model Components, right click, and select Remove from the context menu. You can also simply select the component and press Delete. This will remove the component from the simulation model, but it will not be removed from the original CAD data. Next, zoom in and select the face of the hole on the remaining portion of the catch and delete it. Then delete the hole on the pin component. You'll only need to delete the one hole because the next step will be to create a rectangular sketch using the XY plane, start the sketch at the origin, and move the rectangle up to the upper right corner, aligning it with the farmost point on the pin. With a rectangle defined, start the press pull tool and extrude the rectangle all the way through the component, deleting half of the pin. This will leave a simplified version of one half of the assembly, and that's all you'll need. Leave the Simplify workspace back to Simulation, and then move to Placing a Structural Constraint. Use a fixed constraint on the face of the catch. Both of these components could potentially flex, but for the simulation we want to make sure that the pin does not. We're only focused on the catch. So, hovering over Rigid Bodies, you'll get an Edit icon. Select that, and then pick the pin as the target body. Click OK when this is finished. The pin component will now be allowed to move, but it will not be allowed to flex. With this done, we'll go back to the Constraints panel on the toolbar and select Prescribed Translation. We'll switch the object type to Body and select the pin. Making sure the direction type is set to Reference, pick the bottom edge of the face that was cut off using the extrusion. Change the units to inches and set the magnitude for UY to minus 0.123. Now, select the Multiplier Curve icon, and in the Multiplier Curve dialog, set the first time value to 1 1,000th of a second, and the magnitude to 0.2. The third timestamp to 2 thousandths of a second, and the magnitude to 0.5. The fourth to 3 thousandths of a second, and 0.75 magnitude, and the last two make four thousandths and five thousandths of a second and set the magnitude to one. You can see in the chart on the left, this starts to develop a curve, though you can select any point and modify the curve directly in the graph. When finished, click OK. This will control how the movement of 0.123 inches will be applied over time. After clicking OK, the prescribed translation direction arrow updates, and we can move on to contacts. You'll want to make sure that a global separation contact is enabled and that a proximity bonded contact is not enabled. Under Advanced Settings, make sure that Allow Self Contact is also disabled and then click Generate. To check and make sure that the movement of both contacts is completely controlled, switch on the Degrees of Freedom view in the Display panel. Then, go to Materials and select Study Materials. The study materials will reflect the materials that were used in the design. Switch the material library to the Fusion 360 nonlinear material library, and for the pin, set the material to steel high strength low alloy. Then change the material library back to the Fusion 360 material library. Scroll down and select Steel AISI 1080 410QT. Then click OK. You can turn off the Degrees of Freedom view at any time as well. Next, go to Manage Physical Materials and select the 1080 steel. At the end of the bar, you can select the Edit icon, which will bring up the Editing tabs. Go to the Physical tab and turn on Advanced Properties. Then, select the word Advanced Properties to open the details. Change the behavior to Nonlinear and the type to Elastoplastic. 
This way we can make sure that if the material is permanently deformed, it remains bent out of the way, but if it can snap back in an elastic manner, that it will do so. You'll see that since we've updated the material, that the pre-check is completely satisfied. However, one thing that we haven't done yet that sometimes people prefer to do up front is to go to the Manage icon and change the settings. Under the General Settings, this is where you can set the event duration, which we will set to 5 thousandths of a second. Then, set the number of result intervals to 12 and turn off Allow Element Deletion. One of the capabilities of event simulation in Fusion 360 is to remove or break portions of the mesh so that a component that is broken or penetrated can have its mesh reflect that change. Next, go to the mesh settings and set an absolute size of two millimeters. Then click OK. Now it's time to begin the solve. Because of the intensive nature of the calculations for an event simulation, these studies can only be solved on the cloud. So select the Solve Study icon, then the model will be uploaded to the cloud and processed, and the results will be returned when it's complete. In the meantime, you can go to another model, go to make additional modifications to the model, or even leave Fusion 360 altogether, and your solution will still be processed on the cloud. When the solution has been received, we can go to the results view and see the two components are interlocked. In the legend on the right, it shows the stress value for the last step, and we can walk back through the process, see the legend change for the stress values, and also see the model move. If your model doesn't move, go to the results panel and make sure that your display is set to actual. Looking at the top view and playing back through the steps again, you can see how the catch bends out of the way, and then returns as far back to form as it can, but it is still under stress. This is the type of result that this design really needed.